Hi, this is 14.7. I got a second derivative here, but we should call it second order partial derivatives. That would probably be better. So when we want to do this, uh, you have to figure out all pairs of the partial possibilities. You don't always need all the uh, possibilities, but we want to look at finding uh, if we have a function of two variables, we're going to have four different second order partial derivatives. Now the notation is a little bit funny. So this one right here, this one says that we're going to do x first and then we're going to do x again. Now if we do that, we're going to start with this one. So if I look at the partial notation, I'm going to take the derivative first here. So the key here is that this one is the first variable that you're going to take the derivative with respect to. And this one is, in this notation, is the first one that you're going to be taking the partial derivative with respect to. So we're going to end up with this right here, which is our second order partial. Now I'll look at the notation here now. So this one means that we're going to take it with respect to x first. And this means that we're going to take it with respect to x first. So they're in a little bit different order. So you just got to pay attention to that. Similar down here, this y and this y are the same, and then this y, and, and this one goes against what I just said. So my copy-pasting got me in trouble. So this one is the x, and this one's the y. So those two should be flipped around. And this does mean take the partial with y first, and then x second. So here we want to find the four second-order partial derivatives of this function right here. So let's first of all go ahead and do it with respect to x, just the first partial. So we take this, and I just get the 4y. If I do it with respect to y, I gave some space here. Now this is going to be 4x plus 2e to the y. Now to find the second order partial derivatives, I'm going to do this one with respect to x first and then x second. So I don't see an x here, so I'm just going to get a 0. Then this one I'm going to go x first and y second. Then I'm just going to end up with a 4. And with the, more, the other partial derivative notation, this one would be, I want an x, x there, not a y, of my 4y. That's what is equal to my 0. And this one taking the partial with respect to y of my 4y, that would give me my 4. So that's all we're going to be doing here. Try the next one right here with doing y first and then x second and then y second. So if I do this, and I'm going to do y first and x second. So now I'm going to take this with respect to x. I'm going to get a 4 right here. This part will just give me a 0. Then if I do y and then y, I'm going to get 0 plus 2e to the y. And once again, if I looked at this notation right here, this would take the partial with respect to x right here, and then of my partial z with respect to y. Now that's where this notation comes from, from these partial notations. And then look at it, it's kind of backwards here. This is y first, and this one right here, we did the y first. Okay, so just make sure you understand that notation. Okay, let's look at this theorem 14.1 down here. The equality of mixed partial derivatives. The mix comes in when I have both x and y. So I do it with respect to x first and then y or vice versa. If the two are continuous, then at a point, then the interior point of the domain, uh, some interior point of the domain, then the mixed partials will be equal to each other. Now up here we have somewhat trivial example because we get 4 and 4, but you might have things that are in terms of x and y, and then at a point, for instance, point 2, negative 1, if I plug in 2, negative 1 to whatever my x and y's are, these two mixed partials will become the same. 
what makes that theorem useful? Well, we'll see in a second. Okay, so we want to move on to Taylor polynomials. Yay, we get to use something from last year again. So we're going to kind of fit to a, a, a linear representation if we zoom in or a quadratic approximation for a curve. Uh, I guess you could do even further, but those are the two that we're going to do. Linear and quadratic approximations for f of x, y, 4xy, I got too many 4s there, near a, b. Okay, so let's see this. Taylor polynomial degree 1. Approximating f of xy, 4xy, near a, b. That looks better. If f has a continuous first order partial derivatives, or all of them, then we can approximate f of xy using a linear approximation, which looks like a point plus some sort of change. So we're going to take a starting value and then we're going to change in the x direction, then we're going to change in the y direction. That overall will tell us how we're going to change. Then if we do a Taylor polynomial of degree 2, we're going to be doing what we call a quadratic. So then, same kind of thing, f of xy can be approximated by this quadratic. So we start off with a point. And then here's a change in the x and a change in a y. Then we're going to go and make even further changes that are more accurate. Now, if you remember from uh, your previous course, the Taylor polynomial divided by 2 factorial, 3 factorial, all that other stuff. This one's not divided by 2, so the question is why? Can you figure it out? Well, if you thought of theorem, the previous theorem that we had, that's exactly it. Because if I had the mixed partial here, and divide by 2 with this x minus a, and then it would be y minus b, and then this big partial with the y minus b, and then the x minus a. If I add the two together, since they are equal, I'm going to get just one full one rather than two halves. That's all. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and find the linear approximation and a quadratic approximation valid near a point. And then we want to go ahead and estimate what happens at both those and compare them to the actual value to see what's going on, to see how accurate we are. Now, for your, all you coders and programmers, think about these approximation methods when you are, uh, when somebody's coding a program and they're trying to do estimates of functions at certain values, this is what they might be using. Okay, I started us off here, so we need the point. We're going to need what happens when we evaluate at that point. And then we're going to need the partial with respect to x at that point, And we need the partial with respect to y at that point. Because I need those up here. OK, so then that should fill me out. So my partial with respect to y is just going to be x e to the negative y times negative 1. And I put in the point 1, 0. We'll end up with a negative 1. So these values aren't too bad to plug in here. So now if I want to do my linear approximation, which would be L of xy, this is going to be equal to, okay, so I got this here. What's my evaluation at that point? I have this 1 right here. So it's going to be 1 plus, then my partial in the x direction would be a 1. And then I'm going to have my x minus my a, which is another 1. Ooh, lots of 1s here. And then plus... My partial with respect to y, which is a negative 1, and then this would be y minus my 0. So then that would be my linear approximation for this value, or at L of xy. Now we need the second order partials in order to figure out the quadratic approximation. So go ahead and find those. So I'm working on my second order partial derivatives, so if I do it with respect to x, of x, and so I'm going to end up with just 0 because there is no x there, so this overall is 0, even evaluate it, 1, 0. If I do it now with respect to y, what I'm going to get is taking the derivative of this, I'm going to get negative e, negative y. Evaluated at 1, 0 is going to give me negative 1. Do the partials of y first. 
Notice for this one, I did y first, so that's this right here. Then if I take the partial with respect to x of this thing, I'm just going to get negative e to the negative y. Whoa, oh, wow. Evaluate at 1, 0, I'm going to get negative 1. These two are the same. I did not even have to calculate this one. I just did it for laughs. And then if I do the y, y, I have this thing again. Now if I do it with respect to y, the x is going to come along for the right. And I'm going to write this down as it is, times negative 1, but then i got to times another negative 1, so that will just cancel out. So I'm left with that, and I evaluate that at 1, 0, and I'm going to be left with 1 again. So notice that the quadratic approximation just starts off with the linear approximation. So this thing right here is what we did up here. So I'm going to keep it in that form, by the way. So I'm going to write out now q of x, y is equal to 1 plus x minus 1 minus y. So that's just the same exact thing as I have here. Now I'm going to put in all this extra here. So I'm going to get this 0 right here. This 0 plus 0 times my x minus a quantity squared. That would be this first piece right here. Then I'm going to go plus my mixed partial my mixed partial with x minus a and y minus b. Well, my mixed partial is right here. So that's my negative 1. And I'm going to get my x minus 1 and my y minus 0. And then finally, I'm going to end up with this last piece, which is my yy. -Y. That's kind of fun to say, yy. -Y. And then I'm going to end up with the 1. So this will be plus 1 and then y minus 0 quantity squared. So I'll end up there. So then this piece gets wiped out, and then here is my quadratic approximation right here. Now if I plug in these values and check them, so my exact value when I plug in 0.9 and 0.2 is going to be approximately 0.737. That's my exact value. If I go ahead and do L of 0 0.9, 0 0.2, that's just going to be x minus y. So that's my 0 0.9 minus my 0 0.2, which would be my 0 0.7. So I just use that right there. And then my Q of 0 0.9, 0 0.2 says that I'm going to be working off of this 0 0.7 because I have this right here. Remember, is the same as this right here. So that's going to be my 0.7 up to that point. And then I'm just going to plug in this rest of this. Oops, I just realized I made one small error. I forgot to divide this one by 2. This one I should have divided by 2 as well. And so this one here should be divided by 2. And so I'm going to get 0 0.7. And then this would be plus 0 0.002. I did that wrong. And I'm going to get 0 0.7 plus 0 0.02 plus 0 0.02, and that's going to leave me with 0.74. This is my better approximation, should be better than this one. And sure enough, because I'm trying to approach this exact one, that's the value that I'm going to be getting. So we can use Taylor in order to make some of these approximations. Thank you, Taylor. All right, I hope you enjoyed this. Linear and, uh, linear and quadratic approximations using Taylor series or modification of what we did in BC Calculus. Thanks very much for listening, and I hope you have a great day. Take care.